Jeremy finished watching the video, and there was a blank expression on his face. Where did you get this? He asked with a cold voice. Madeline felt that it was preposterous. Is where I got it from important? Isn't the truth that you're looking at more important? The truth? Jeremy lifted his head and deleted the video with a swipe of his finger. He even deleted the backup copy of it that was in Madeline's album. Madeline was beyond shocked by his actions. She ran over hysterically to take back her phone. However, it was too late. He had emptied the deleted album folder. Jeremy, why? Why did you do that? Are you unaware of how many people are criticizing me online now? That was the only video that could have proven my innocence. Madeline broke down. However, Jeremy scoffed indifferently. What does your innocence have to do with me? Anything will suffice as long as Meredith is happy. Jeremy's question made Madeline speechless. Her innocence and life had nothing to do with him. He only cared about Meredith. Thus, even though that woman had done something despicable, to him, it was still tolerable. It was all because he loved her. He was blinded by love. He loved her so much that he had no principles. All of a sudden, Madeline calmed down. She looked at the man in front of her, and she could feel tears stinging the corners of her eyes. Jeremy, would it be fine even if I were to be cyberbullied to death by netizens one day? Jeremy did not lift his head. Would you die? His answer was cold. It was like a sharp knife that pierced her heart. Inch by inch, the gut-wrenching pain spreaded from her heart to her entire body. Madeline clenched her fists. The man's handsome face was blurry due to her tears. Jeremy, I hope you can be as indifferent as you are now when that day comes. Upon saying that, Madeline left and did not turn around. Tears could be seen rolling down her cheeks uncontrollably. She could just forget the wrongful devotion she had had for him throughout the past 12 years. She was in disbelief that she had fallen for such a man. Madeline ran out of the building, and it started raining. She was in a daze and thus did not notice a car charging toward her. Screech. An ear-piercing screech was heard as the brakes tightened, and Madeline lifted her head. Her vision was blurry because of the rain and her tears. Hence, she could only vaguely see a man getting out of the vehicle before running toward her. Before she could see his face, she passed out. When Madeline woke up, the sky was dark. She looked around her and realized she was in a refined apartment. Nonetheless, it was foreign. The moment she sat up, a handsome and tall man walked in through the door. After looking at him for a few seconds, Madeline asked in disbelief, Dan? Daniel Graham smiled gently. Long time no see, Maddie. It had indeed been a long time. Ever since Daniel graduated from high school, Madeline did not see him anymore. I asked my private doctor to take a look at you just now. He said you're fine. Daniel handed Madeline a glass of warm water as he spoke. Madeline smiled apologetically. I'm sorry, Dan. I caused so much trouble for you. It isn't trouble at all. Everything's fine as long as you're okay. Dan's answer warmed Madeline's heart. However, when she recalled what Jeremy had said, she felt her heart break once more. Perhaps this was the consequence of delusional and one-sided love. It was late, and Madeline wanted to go home. However, Daniel had ordered takeout from a five-star hotel. The entire table was filled. Madeline did not want Daniel's good intentions to go to waste, so she stayed and had dinner with him. After dinner, Daniel insisted on sending Madeline home. When the car arrived in front of the villa, Dan said out of the blue, My doctor told me you're pregnant. Does Jeremy know? Madeline was halted in her tracks. She turned her head around and saw that the moonlight was shining on Daniel's handsome face. His eyes looked kind. He does. Of course, my husband knows that I'm pregnant. Madeline forced a smile and got out of the car. Thank you, Dan. I'll buy you dinner next time. Daniel nodded and smiled. I'll wait for you to call me, Maddie. Okay. Madeline smiled and waved. She turned around after she watched Daniel's car leave. The moment she entered the house, a cold hand viciously grabbed and pulled her arm away. Madeline had not seen it coming, and her nose crashed into the man's firm chest. The next instant, Jeremy's frigid voice was heard from the top of her head. Madeline, you're even more of a B asterisk TCH than I imagined. The man's cold accusations rained down on Madeline, and she felt extremely ironic. Weren't you already aware about it, Mr. Whitman? Madeline's answer enraged Jeremy even more. He lifted her chin angrily as he glared at her with his bottomless, black eyes that were filled with anger. 
So, you went to look for your old flame, hmm? Old flame? He must be referring to Daniel. Daniel had once been Jeremy's classmate. They were two years older than her and had been her seniors. When Daniel confessed to Madeline during their graduation ceremony, everyone in school thought that they began dating afterward. Madeline did not know that Jeremy had believed those rumors as well. Madeline, I'm telling you, even if I were to kick you out one day, don't think that you can run away to other men. I want to see who dares pick up trash I've used before. Trash. He was describing her with such words. Madeline's heart was hurting. She pushed away the man with force that she did not know she had. Jeremy, just because you're not loyal to this marriage, it doesn't mean that I'd have an affair like you. I've only had one man this entire time and it's you. So, not only have you humiliated me with your words, but you've also humiliated yourself. After she said that, Madeline quickly ran back to her room. On the other hand, Jeremy stood on the spot, the emptiness in his arms somehow made him fall into a daze. He lifted his head to look at Madeline's back and frowned gently. The moonlight shone down on his face, and his expression was unclear. Ellipsis. Madeline went to work as usual. However, the moment she stepped into the office, she was called over by the Human Resources Department. Her manager gave her a resignation letter immediately, and Madeline was confused. Nevertheless, he only said coldly, our company does not welcome light-fingered people. Madeline understood that it was the result of the video of her having, stolen, being put online. She had had the evidence to prove her innocence. However, Jeremy had destroyed it overtly. Now, she was merely a shameless thief in everyone's eyes. Madeline felt wronged and furious. However, there was nothing she could do. In Glendale, anything would go Jeremy's way if he opened his mouth. Nevertheless, he would never help her. He even wished for her to disappear forever. Madeline brought her resume to a few other company interviews, but they each rejected her without hesitation. Furthermore, perhaps it was a figment of her imagination, but she felt unwell. From time to time, she felt pain coming from her abdomen. Madeline was worried about her child, so she went to the hospital for a checkup immediately. There were many people in the hospital. While waiting for her results, Madeline looked at the pregnant ladies that had husbands by their sides and felt envious. She did not even dare fantasize about Jeremy coming with her for a maternity checkup one day. It was virtually impossible. Oh? Well, if it isn't Maddie, Meredith's voice was suddenly heard. Madeline lifted her head and saw Meredith in a loose shirt. She was smiling at her gently. You're here for your maternity checkup as well? Is Jeremy not here with you? Meredith was all smiles. She looked naive and harmless. Madeline felt a pang in her heart, but she did not want to show her weakness. Jeremy's not with you too. He'll know about that bastard child in your stomach sooner or later. Meredith's expression changed abruptly as she became unhappy. However, in the blink of an eye, she smiled and felt pleased with herself as she said, Oh, you mean Jeremy? He's helping me take my results now. Madeline had thought her comeback was brilliant, however, upon hearing Meredith's words, she felt utterly defeated. Jeremy was there with Meredith for the latter's maternal checkup. It was supposed to be something that a husband and wife did. Jeremy had given another woman his priority. Meredith walked in front of Meredith proudly. Maddie, what's wrong? Are you upset? Heartbroken? Madeline clenched her fists, but she refused to allow herself to lose her composure. No, I just feel that you're shameless. After she said that, she let her undisturbed gaze fall on Meredith's twisted face. Meredith, I don't think I'd be able to find another woman who's as shameless and proud as you. Someone who thinks so highly of herself despite only being a mistress. You, one day, Jeremy will know that the child in your stomach is not his. Meredith's hypocritical mask was being ripped off her face. However, she suddenly broke into a smile as she said, Jeremy loves me so much that even if the baby isn't his, he'll still love him or her without fail. Unlike you, so what if you have his child? Not only does he not want it, but he'd never allow you to give birth to that bastard child. Meredith gritted her teeth and grabbed Madeline who was about to turn around to leave. The next instant, Meredith's face fell, and she started sobbing. Her voice was pretty loud as she spoke. Maddie, please. I love Jeremy. Please give him back to me. What? Maddie, just scream and hit me all you want. Don't hurt my baby. Ah. Meredith screamed out of the blue, and at the same time, let go of Madeline's hand before rolling down the stairs. 
all kinds of looks that were filled with accusation and surprise locked onto Madeline. Someone even pointed at her and shouted, that woman pushed a pregnant lady down the stairs. It wasn't me, I didn't do it. Madeline tried her best to explain, but no one believed her. She wanted to go down to look at Meredith's condition when a force pushed her away. Madeline stumbled backward and painfully crashed into the railing. She sat on the steps and clutched her stomach which was now in excruciating pain. While the crowd criticized her, she watched as Jeremy ran down the stairs and frantically carried Meredith who had fallen unconscious. He was her husband, but he was worried about another woman instead. He had never been concerned about her even when she was accused or berated. Madeline looked at Jeremy's back, and the temperature of her heart plummeted. Jeremy, why are you doing this to me? If having fallen for you was a mistake, I'm the biggest sinner ever. Madeline thought that aside from not believing that she had not pushed Meredith, the most Jeremy would do was scold her viciously. She had not expected him to call the cops. Madeline no longer had any time to get her maternity results and the biopsy of the tumor. On the contrary, her wrists were put in a pair of cold handcuffs. The policeman was stern. Madeline Crawford, according to evidence at hand and eyewitnesses, you're believed to be involved in a case of assault. Please return with us to the station for further investigation. Before Madeline could explain, she was brought to the interrogation room. Madeline kept on repeating that she had not pushed Meredith. However, the police then placed the so-called evidence in front of her. The security footage of the hospital showed that she had been talking to Meredith at the staircase. At that moment, Meredith's expression was kind and friendly, while Madeline's was icy. They then started pushing and pulling at each other. After that, Meredith was pushed down the stairs by Madeline. Two kind pregnant ladies had even come to the station to give their testimonies. They said that Meredith had begged Madeline to not hurt her child. Then, when they turned around, they saw Meredith being pushed down the stairs by Madeline. Madeline was shocked when she saw the evidence and heard the eyewitnesses' testimonies. She had been framed by Meredith. The latter's act had managed to fool everyone. Consequently, Madeline was brought to the lockup. Madeline felt anxious when she saw the iron bars and dim surroundings. If she were convicted of the assault, she would definitely go to prison. However, she was pregnant at the moment. She could not let her child suffer such pain with her. At the thought of it, Madeline ran toward the iron bars frantically. I was framed. I didn't push anyone. I want to see my husband. Please, let me see my husband.